Hey, what's up guys? Good to be back with you here again. And uh, today I wanted to talk a little bit about a subject that's probably going to come up from time to time here when we talk about baseball simulation, about sabermetrics, and all of this other stuff that we love to spend hours and hours thinking about and debating about. What we're going to talk about here is ballparks and park factors, and especially the way that Diamond Mine Baseball handles this. This is going to be different than what you're used to seeing on Baseball Reference. It's different from what you'll see from games like OTP. It's different from a lot of other games, and I'll show you exactly what's going on so that uh, we have an idea idea of what happens. Um, uh, so when we click over here, first of all, on uh, Diamond Mine Baseball, I will uh, keep myself over here on this side of the screen might as well. To see where all this stuff is, we have to go up to game, or, uh, View and up to Organizer, right? It's not very well organized. We could use a different organizer here, I think. And what we really could use is the ability to make the screen larger. So my apologies, you're going to have to deal with um, a pretty, pretty small screen. We'll just double click here on the Boston Red Sox. Um, I'm sorry, we have to go over here first to Parks. We'll go over here to Parks, and then we'll go, uh, we'll go to Fenway Park here, might as well. When you double click on the uh, park name in the organizer, you'll see that there's this information, modify park, general information, physical, weather, and factors. So general information gives you the name of the park city that it's in. Physical will tell you about things like what kind of, um, whether there's a roof, what kind of surface there is, how large or small the uh, foul ground is. It'll tell, this is where you can choose the image that you want to uh, have representing the ballpark in the game, which I'll talk about, I think, at a later time. You can also input information about the outfield distance and the height of the fence. Um, most of which is mostly cosmetic, as I understand it. There's weather information, including the common wind directions, the average temperature, temperature change, and stuff like this. This is all very, very archaic, to be honest with you. There are other games out there that will just basically take weather data directly from databases that exist, which would be probably a little more accurate. Um, and then there are the factors, which is what we're going to talk about today. So we'll go over here to the uh, help screen, first of all. Ballparks play a large role in Diamond Mine Baseball. Um, when players are created, their raw statistics are adjusted for the statistical impact of their home park. But what does that mean? That means that the thing that matters the most is, are the statistical factors. The game's not going to adjust player statistics based on random weather patterns and stuff like that. No, what we were talking about really is the statistical patterns. Um, it used to be very difficult to create these, but then Diamond Mine Baseball back in the good old days created a huge historical ballpark database. Back in the old days, you had to pay money for this, actually. as When uh, I started playing the game, you had to pay money back in my day. Um, but uh, nowadays, um, I think the whole thing is available for free, or I think it comes with all the seasons that you buy or something like that. I can't remember exactly what it was. Um, we're going to look over here at the statistical factors column to understand kind of what we're talking about. So... This will help you create and modify statistical park factors. Now, it doesn't tell you directly what the formula is, but it gives you an idea, right? This will tell you the park's impact on the numbers of singles, doubles, triples, and home runs that are hit by both right, light, uh, left and right-handed batters. The range can be from 20 to 500. The average park rating will, have, will be 100. So, for example, if the park allows only 58% as many home runs as the average ballpark, the home run rating for the ballpark would be 58. So if it were that case for right-handed batters, and you would give it that 58 rating. So for example, if a team's road game included 140 home runs and its home game included 100, both for and against the team, you can conclude that the home park allows only 100 divided by 140 equals 71% as many home runs as the average of the other parks in the league. So you would assign a home run factor of 71 for this park, right? So you can follow the math here, right? And it's a pretty easy formula to understand, and they do this for singles, doubles, triples, and home runs. But there are a couple of issues that I would have with this and a couple of problems that we'll talk about, I think, a little bit here in a second, and we'll end up talking about more as we move along. Um, but this will help you read the screen and understand what this means. When I talk with people who uh, understand, especially card and dice games, they usually don't think about ballpark factors in this sense, right? If I talk with somebody who's used to playing NP3, for example, they're probably not going to think very much about ballpark factors at all. Some games such as APA and I think Stratomatic have ballpark factors that will usually affect home runs that have been sort of created or modified over time to be a little bit cosmetic. The truth is that with Diamond Baseball, this is also cosmetic, but it's cosmetic to a different type of extent. So Fenway Park, as you can see here, if you're a right-handed batter, 
you have a much higher percentage chance of hitting a home run than a triple. It will take away triples because it's so small. Um, but remember that this ballpark factor is relative to other teams in the league. This is one of the problems that you run into with Diamond Mine Baseball, especially when you're playing cross-era play. These factors to work, if I understand this help file correctly, right, and tell me if I'm wrong, for these factors to work right, the average ballpark in the league should have a rating of 100, right? In other words, if Fenway Park is going to be extreme on home runs, some other um, uh, park, not neutral park, some other park like Braves Field, is going to be maybe a little bit um, less uh, generous with home runs and maybe a little bit more generous with triples, right? There are a lot of questions to ask, right, because Braves Field is kind of a symmetric ballpark, as I recall, um, eh, eh, more or less, um, eh, maybe a little bit more uh, room there in left field, though I wouldn't say a huge amount more room. Um, and, but when we take a look at the triples and home run ratings, it looks like it is hugely skewed towards left-handed hitters. Another thing to keep in mind. Um, this is really, really important to understand because if you start taking like random ballparks from random seasons and putting them into other seasons without adjusting these factors for the league that they're playing in and for the sort of effect you want to see, you're going to have stuff that goes crazy. You're going to start having guys who hit tons and tons of home runs because of the ballpark that they're playing in and because of the uh, nature of the home park itself. So that's a real quick look into this. Now I'll give you a little bit of a preview here in the uh, couple of minutes that, that we have remaining of kind of what my thinking is on the subject. I do think that there are problems with um, looking at ballparks this way in large part because we keep focusing on splits. So at some point in time here, we're going to have our little discussion about splits and uh, the problems with using a lot of splits in baseball, especially the problems with lefty righty splits. And the big problem is the term sample size. This is what we run into because there is a natural reason why there are only so many left-handed batters you can imagine to have in any lineup. And this will make it so that your splits overall are going to be skewed one way or another. When we look at things and we start really breaking it down into individual components, what we're doing is we're reducing the sample size, making it more likely that some sort of strange variance will take over and will make something sort of crazy happen. This is a huge, huge problem when it comes to ballpark effects, especially. Um, because uh, a uh, ballpark effect that perhaps is not caused by the park itself, but that is instead caused by the personnel who are playing in the ballpark can have an outsized uh, impact, especially if you're looking only at one year. If we change it and we say, well, we're going to look at three-year averages, that kind of helps reduce the amount of influence that um, an outlier might have on you, but not necessarily. So we're going to take a closer look at this as time goes on and see if we can't spot a couple of places where there are certain outliers that are probably making weird things happen with ballparks. The truth is that we know the ballparks have an effect. My gut feeling tells me that that effect is actually much smaller than we tend to believe, except in extreme cases. So if you have the green monster at Fenway, for example, that will have an impact. If you're playing in the Baker Bowl, it will have an impact. But if you're talking about playing in like Veteran Stadium versus Bush Stadium versus whatever, you're probably not going to see a huge ball impact from uh, park factors. And I would say that also with most modern parks, the influence that the park factors will have is probably less than we tend to think. And um, it's also got to be relative. There's no way to measure it in absolute terms. I'd love to know what you think about the park factors. Do you think the Diamond Mine does it a good way? Do you think it does it a poor way? Let me know what you think in the comments. We'll talk about this later. Talk to you later. Bye.